is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. where it's naturally supernatural. I wouldn't want to be in any other world. And where we're coming to in history, you better have it naturally supernatural. Speaking of history, how would you like to have next month's newspaper today? What difference would it make? All the difference in the world? My guest has such revelation knowledge that he knows the next war. He knows, and it's written. It's not just some, uh, 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 he heard a voice. It is written in the Word of God what nations are going to be destroyed next, what nations will survive, what is going to happen, and I want to find out about this. We'll be right back. <laughs> My guest, John McTurney, is a throwback. What do I mean by a throwback? He is literally an old covenant prophet who's around today. I mean, he reminds me of someone like a Jeremiah, uh, because just before 9-11, what was going on inside of you, John? Sid, I knew something terrible was coming. I was in prayer. It was like a dread came over me about two weeks before 9-11, this heavy weight, and I was not surprised. I didn't know specifically the World Trade Center was going to be attacked, but I knew in the spirit something big was happening. And in January 2012, that same type of ominous feeling came on you again, but it was different this time. It stayed. Y yes, uh, yes. It's. Um, as soon as the calendar hit, as soon as we went to the new year, it was strange. Uh, I looked ahead towards like the summer and the fall of 2012, and I got this ominous feeling, but I, I'm calling it like low grade. It wasn't as intense mm -hmm. as 9-11, but it has not li lifted this year. It's, it's constantly on me. Okay, October 11th, 1987, you're minding your own business, you turn on TV, you see a gigantic uh, rally of homosexuals, gigantic, and uh, on the TV, take me from there. Well, I was not aware it had occurred, or, and I, it was just like a soundbite on TV, and I just got up, it kind of upset me to see things like, um, uh, thank God I'm gay, the way they had big signs up and, and things like that. So I got up and I turned the TV off, and walked away. I never thought of uh, interceding before the Lord. I never thought of crying out to Him for mercy. I never thought that He would judge the land because of it. And what happened next? Right after that, the stock market started to uh, crash. It had the biggest one week uh, percentage wise crash in the market in history. Then the following Monday, we had the big crash of 508 points, and the market had contracted a third. And God spoke to you about the video that you saw on TV. Yes, sir, he did. I, I was watching TV. I was standing in the living room, and the news broadcaster's lip was actually quivering. You could see it. It was quivering up and down like this. And he said, is this going to be uh, the beginning of a, another Great Depression? Is the economy going to collapse? And immediately, I had like a vision of the week before when I was watching that event in Washington. And then I heard 
crystal clear the voice of the Lord. It wasn't from the outside, it was in the inside, but I was actually having a conversation. And in it, it was the Lord put the two together, right in my mind, the event that happened the week before, this stock market crash, and he said judgment was on the land, and I did not fear him. I didn't understand his holiness. Now, the research that you have done, the research that John McTurnan has done, I'm a Jew. I know a lot about my history and my people. I know a lot about the Bible. But I have never seen the material that John McTurnan has gathered of the American Jewish slash Israeli connection and the blessings of God as a result of it. Uh, very briefly, John, tell me about George Washington and his Jewish connection. George Washington loved the Jewish people. He, uh, his chief of staff uh, during the war was a Jew, and his personal physician was a Jew. And the, in, in America in general, the colonial America, it was not an impediment to be a Jew. The Jews had reached great heights. They were completely free, and they wrote about that. They wrote how free they were. There were seven Jewish communities in America, and in 1790, he wrote a letter to each community, and two in particular, the one to Savannah, Georgia, and the one to Newport, Rhode Island, were fantastic. I'll sum them up. Basically, he connected the, the America becoming a nation with the Holy God of Israel as Israel had been delivered from Egypt into the Promised Land. He made a direct, in fact, he quoted Psalm 144, blessed is that nation whose Lord is the, is, is the God. Now, there, there have been blessings on America because of this amazing uh, freedom that was given to Jewish people. Uh, you pointed out uh, in the late 1800s, there were pogroms and there were, in, in Russia and Jews were being persecuted. What country opened their arms to Jews? The United States of America. But the thing that's so mind-blowing to me is President Roosevelt uh, was about to tell me briefly what he did, what happened to him. President Roosevelt met with the king of Saudi Arabia in Egypt, and they had a one-day meeting. And as a result of the meeting, uh, the, the Saudi Arabia agreed to make America special deals with America with oil and that America would protect Saudi Arabia. That's what the official history says. But also connected with it, President Roosevelt agreed to the king that he would not allow a Jewish state in Palestine. So mm. that was really, I see it as I look at history, and my mind there's no doubt that President Roosevelt traded uh, the, what uh, God's prophetic plan was, and America was a part of it, for the creation of the nation of Israel. He traded that for oil. And what happened shortly after he did that? Well, Sid, there was a uh, letter from the king of Saudi Arabia to Roosevelt articulating that meeting that took place in February. This letter was dated March 10th, 1945, and it, it, it said incredible things about the Jewish people. He, he actually likened them to the Nazis. Mm. He said that a state in Israel, a state of Israel in Palestine would be like creating a Nazi state. And his life was taken how much after that letter? Well, what happened was Roosevelt responded to the king and said, no, no, America is uh, never going to allow a a Jewish state in Palestine. That letter was dated April 5th, 1945. Roosevelt died on April 12th, one, exactly one week later, 1945. And guess who took his place? A president, his name was Truman, whose mother taught him from a child to love the Jew in Israel, and had Harry Truman not been president, perhaps Israel would not have come into existence. As I study history and I understand the mood of America, I think that Harry Truman is probably the only man that would have gone through with the recognition of the state of Israel. Okay, when we come back, America's fatal mistake. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. It's here. 
here. The Supernatural Mentoring Kit is finally here. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with John McTurney. And uh, by the way, are you in studio audience? Are you enjoying this teaching? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> are you enjoying this teaching? I, I have to tell you, there are facts I'm learning that I never, ever knew. For instance, God began to show John McTernan there was a definite correlation uh, between uh, America doing something against Israel and what the world calls natural disasters, stock market going down, earthquakes, tornadoes. Uh, and for instance, tell me about what happened to President Bush Sr.'s home and why. Well, this is an amazing story. President Bush Sr., after uh, the first Gulf War, decided he wanted a comprehensive Middle East peace plan. And he's, he centered that around dividing the land of Israel, about creating a Palestinian state and dividing Jerusalem, which is in gross violation of God's word. There are many scriptures warning not to divide the land. God will judge. Uh, tell, paraphrase Joel 3 for, as one of these scriptures. Yeah, Joel 3, verse 2, specifically says that God will judge for hurting the Jewish people and for dividing the land, that he specifically will judge for doing that. Isn't it amazing? It specifically says in Joel chapter 3 that nations will be judged, and it says one specific sin, dividing up my land. In other words, God says that land is not the Jewish people's. That land is not the Palestinians'. He says, my land. That's his land. Get it? Now, he has arranged a long-term lease with the Jewish people <laughs> on his land. <laughs> That's and, right. uh, and Psalm 105, verse 8 to 11 says, I, God, have leased the land. He doesn't say lease. I've given the land to the Jewish people, and he has three adjectives. It must be important when he says it three different ways. Forever everlasting, and a thousand generations. Okay, now let's go back to Bush Sr., who violates Joel 3 and a number of other scriptures. What happened? It's October 30th, 1991. President Bush is in Madrid, Spain, starting officially what we call now the Madrid peace process, and the centerpiece of that is dividing the land of Israel. He's giving the speech to do this. While he's doing it, now, this is not a day before or a day after or a week before or a week after. On the very day he's in Madrid giving the speech, a bizarre storm had formed in the North Atlantic. And by bizarre, I mean it was a hurricane. When's the last time you've heard a hurricane October 30th forming off Nova Scotia? It came the wrong way. It's called a retrograde storm. Normally, weather patterns are from west to east and from south to north. This storm went from east to west and from north to south, retrograde. It happens in my lifetime. It's the only time I've ever heard it. And according to meteorologists, it happens once every two, three hundred years. And what it did was it raked the east coast of the United States and it sent gigantic waves. And President Bush has a home in Kennebunkport, Maine, on the coast. And it's a neck of land that sticks out in the Atlantic. While he's giving this speech, this storm, which became known as the Perfect Storm, it was a, a best-selling book by it. And it was called the Perfect, perfect storm, storm because all these variables had to happen for something to happen that just can't happen. happen. Uh, and, and that's why they said it, they made a movie and a book, The Perfect Storm. Go ahead. So on the very day, and I'm emphasizing this, on the very day, the Perfect Storm sent 30-foot waves against his home and destroyed it. When he came back, from Madrid, Spain. He had to go to Kenny Bunkport. He, sent two, he spent two days overseeing the reconstruction of his home. Yes, but there are people watching us right now and say, colossal coincidence. What would you say to well, that? Well, th that's a legitimate, th that's legitimate. Yeah. But what I would say is, as I have documented, I have over a hundred now of the worst disasters that hit America. So I would say to this person, 
If I could show you 10 of the 10 greatest same day events, would you believe it? The person says no. If I showed you the 20 greatest same day events, would you? I can go 30, 40, 50, 100. In, in other words, uh, you showed me the FEMA. Yes. Uh, the, the website, yes. which anyone can go on, right. and the top 10 natural disasters to hit America, the top 10 economic disasters to hit America uh, within how long from the disaster uh, to doing something negative with Israel and the disaster, how long did it take and how many were connected with doing something against Israel? Well, uh, usually it's the same day or within 24 hours uh, afterwards. It's usually a same day event. And, and the how, headlines. How many of the top 10? Oh, nine out of the top 10. Speaking about dividing the land, uh, you have a very interesting thing. Uh, th th this was the Madrid Peace Conference. And then there is something that sounds similar the, the, the um, Madra Fault. Explain. Uh, in, it, it is very uh, unique. It's the Madrid peace process to divide the land of Israel. Right in the middle of the United States, running ref, roughly from Memphis up into Missouri, and then it splits, is the New Madrid Fault. It's the same spelling. And it runs right in the middle of the United States. And the greatest earthquakes to ever hit the United States hit in 1811 and 1812 with the New Madrid Fault, and it literally sent the Mississippi River running backwards. If that hit today, Sid, it would be right in the middle of the, it would cut the United States right in half, and you would have bridges down, you'd have power lines down, you'd have gas lines down, you'd have Memphis to St. Louis down, over to Cincinnati. It would be devastating to the United States. Could it be that God is saying, you divide my land, United States, and I will divide your land? Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I'm 14 years old. This morning, I watched It's Supernatural about angels and warmth poured on me. It made me cry. God healed me of stage four inoperable cancer. It is a real blessing to have It's Supernatural to watch each week. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth here with John McTurney. You don't know this. We had a major breakdown in our equipment just before we did this segment because someone doesn't want you to hear this, but someone wants you to hear it, and he's greater than someone that doesn't want you to hear it. All right? So, Obadiah, jam-packed with what's about ready to happen on planet Earth. John, give me a brief synopsis of Obadiah. A powerful book, Sid, and it's about the ancient battle between the House of Esau, which today would be the Palestinians, and the Jewish people. And it documents what happened in history. Then there's a verse in Obadiah, verse 15, which says, the day of the Lord is near upon all nations. That brings Obadiah right to today. The day of the Lord is the period of time around the second coming of Jesus Christ and when God judges the nations. And according to Obadiah, it says he's going to, to judge the nations for what they have done to Israel, how they have touched Israel. It's a fantastic book. I, I, you know, the, the sentence that jumps out at me in Obadiah is Obadiah 1.15. As you have done to them, meaning Israel, as you have done to Israel, it will be done to you. I mean, you can't get any stronger yeah. than that. Right. But Obadiah actually shows the confederation of, I believe it's, is it Psalm 83? It, Obadiah, and, Obadiah and Psalm 83 tied together, and Obadiah is sort of the centerpiece. And when you understand Obadiah, everything fits together. Obadiah talks about an all-out war between the house of Jacob and the house of Esau, and none of the house of Esau will remain. It's all out. And that's what's happening now. We actually see uh, in the Middle East this, uh, this all-out war building up. Now, what's going on in Egypt as you see it? Uh, um, Egypt is turning, well, it's not turning, it has turned 
to become a, the Muslim Brotherhood are now in control of Egypt. They control everything, the president, the military, the parliament. And the Muslim Brotherhood is, is like Hamas, and they are sworn to destroy Israel. Well, you know what's so amazing to me? It is when Morsi became president, uh, he's, he's uh, with the Muslim Brotherhood, and by my dad, they are welcome guests in our White House. I want you to take a look at uh, Morsi's spiritual leader, and he's actually in the background. Let's take a look at this clip right now. <laughs> من المحلة من قلب الدلتا من قلب مصر وليسمع العالم جميعا ولن نوري ولن نواري ولن نداهن نعم هدفنا القدس سنصلي في القدس أو ننال الشهادة على أعتاب القدس الله على القدس ريحين شهداء بالملايين على القدس ريحين you know, it's, it, it's amazing to me. Uh, John, did you read the same article I did that they're actually, for people that disagree with the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, they're having crucifixions, real crucifixions? Yes, I absolutely read it. And uh, this is the rise of, like, Mohammed Islam. This is the way it was under Mohammed. But notice the target, the goal of this is Jerusalem. They actually said in that clip, uh, the full clip, that they, they're forming a caliphate, which is a pan-Islamic union, mm -hmm. and that Cairo is not going to be the capital, but Jerusalem is going to be the capital, and or they'll die as martyrs. So what's coming, according to Obadiah, is this all-out war, and that Obadiah then tells us what happens after this war. Tell me what, just briefly, what nations are going to be destroyed shortly, according to Obadiah? According to Obadiah, Lebanon, Jordan, uh, Egypt, uh, Syria, and is, it's possibly Saudi Arabia. It, some things are a little unclear, Sid, but those nations definitely, and, and, and Iraq, which is ancient Babylon, is going to get involved. In. But it actually says the borders of Israel will expand. Ex right, uh, what's it. going to happen? Uh, Israel is going to move south to Egypt, according to Obadiah. Israel is going to move east into Jordan. Israel is going to move north into Lebanon. And it's interesting, in the book it tells you the exact location, like how far north they're going to go. And Israel will move north into uh, Syria and all the Palestinian strongholds in Israel today, like Gaza and what's called the West Bank, which is Samaria in the Bible, will disappear and they will all, unif Israel will be all unified. Do you know what I believe? I believe if America makes this fatal mistake, the greatest country in the world will no longer be the greatest country in the world. But it doesn't have, have to happen to you and your house, right. because God says, not me, not John McTurnan, God says, Genesis 12, 3, I, God, will bless those who bless the Jewish people, and I, God, will curse those who curse them. And this is a covenant with Almighty God, and I believe that you can appropriate all of the blessings of God on your house as you walk in the blessings of God for your being a blessing to the Jewish people in Israel. Greatest blessing in the world, tell a Jewish person about Jesus. Do it right away. President George Herbert Walker Bush announces America's support to divide the land of Israel at the Madrid Peace Accords. Immediately, the perfect storm wreaks destruction on America's east coast and destroys the president's residence at Kennebunkport, Maine. President Clinton pushes Israel to give up land for peace. Within days, he's embroiled in a sex scandal that leads to his impeachment. President George Bush pressures Israel to give up land for peace. The result is 9-11 and Katrina. Japan's foreign minister announces Japan's support for a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. The result? A tsunami of epic proportions hits Japan and destroys its nuclear facility. We'll return with more of It's Supernatural in just one moment.
In John McTurnan's prophetic book and DVD series, he presents shocking and overwhelming evidence that God has been warning America with disasters such as hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, tornadoes, and wildfires that occur within days from when America puts pressure on Israel to divide Jerusalem and the land of Israel. America's destiny is at stake. There are only three reasons stated in the Bible why countries lose their land. One has to do with the sin of homosexuality. The other has to do with the sin of murdering innocents in the womb. And the third has to do with being on the wrong side of the fence in reference to the Jew in Israel. Call now and get John McDernan's must-read updated book, As America Has Done to Israel, and his brand new prophetic three DVD teaching series, America's Fatal Mistake. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9162. This three-part DVD series was produced in Sidroth's Media and Mentoring Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. In his book and prophetic three DVD series, you will understand how you can survive God's ongoing judgment warnings on America and the world for their insistence on dividing God's land, Israel, and Jerusalem. Learn that America's prosperity and godly favor was the result of being a blessing and defender of Israel and the Jewish people. Clearly understand the future of America and specific nations as predicted in the prophetic book of Obadiah as they continue to pressure Israel to divide God's land. Find out the truth behind the Arab Spring in light of Bible prophecy and what could be the next event in God's prophetic calendar. God's Word is crystal clear about people and nations touching his prophetic people, Israel. And disaster after disaster has been hitting the United States on the very day that we're interfering with God's prophetic plan. But whatever happens to America, it doesn't have to happen to you. It doesn't have to happen to your family. And I believe we're coming into a time in which Psalm 91 is going to be activated if you're on the right side of the fence of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Get this material. You will not regret it. You will not be disappointed. It will change your life. It will change your family's life. And by faith, it'll change our nation's life. Get John McDernan's must-read updated book, As America Has Done to Israel, and his brand new prophetic three DVD teaching series, America's Fatal Mistake. Yours for a gift of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9162. Call or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9162 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write to Today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Sid Roth has been given revelation of the future of America, and now you can be a part of the greatest revival in history. Hear this timely message straight from the heart of God.